Let's talk about Fresh, the next generation web framework. The to understand Fresh, first one must understand Dino. The goal of Dino was fixing the problems that the creator of Node.js had with Node.js. In particular, the package management, the build ecosystem, Node JIP, and the lack of core TypeScript support. And Dino makes it very easy to write type in your terminal, D Dino run TypeScript file, and then it runs the TypeScript file for you. No more compiler, no more builder, no more crazy bundle chaos. You run a TypeScript file and it runs. If that TypeScript file needs packages, it imports them from URLs. And from those URLs, it fetches whatever it needs and loads that in your runtime, just like the browser. If you want to import a script in the browser, you can add a script tag from some other URL and it will pull that JavaScript into your browser and into your runtime. Node forced you to NPM install packages and that significant departure from how the browser works is something that Ryan Dahl has regretted since he made that departure. NPM is super important and makes our lives as web devs a lot easier overall, but it does make a lot of simple workflows more complex. Like why do you have to go through five steps to load a simple JavaScript function from another like code base or another file? What if I just paste the URL import squared from github.com slash theobr slash squared.ts. And then I can paste that URL in my code base and start using that package directly. Because of all that, there is no build step. You write TypeScript and then you run it and it runs. So Dino is an alternative runtime for Node.js. They've also been working on a new Vercel-like deployment environment called Dino Deploy, where you can run your Dino code on their distributed, it's not an edge network, it's a bunch of containers that start up really fast that are ready to go to run your Dino code for you. Their architecture is pretty fast, really uh, impressed with the performance that I've been getting playing with it. Uh, August has made a really good point. It's not an alternative runtime for Node, it's an alternative runtime to Node. Both are built on top of V8. Uh, yeah, Dino is an alternative to Node.js. You use it instead of Node to run TypeScript and JavaScript code. They have been trying to, in a lot of ways, reinvent a lot of the core things that we that we use every day in Node.js. Like obviously things like the file system API, but also packages like Next.js. And their goal of moving towards towards an alternative ecosystem has been surprisingly effective. They have built a lot of pieces that are in a, a really good place. I'm impressed with how fast they have moved. Actually, I... I'm OG as fuck. This was from before Dino was even Dino yet. It was still Deno when I bought this thing. I was an OG supporter. Really excited to have the, the Node.js landscape challenged a little bit. And I'm really hyped with what Ryan's been doing here. <laughs> Fresh is, first off, the acknowledgement that Dino does not have a framework for building websites that is comparable to, uh, how do I put it? It's an admittance that you're not going to make Node.js run in, or Next.js run in Deno. Deno is a different enough runtime that it is unreasonable to expect a web framework written for Next.js to run in Deno. Because of that, they've had to build their own new frameworks. And because they're starting from scratch, they made a really good choice, which is keep it minimal as hell. And as you can see from here, most of the points here aren't things it does, it's things it doesn't. It doesn't have runtime overhead. It doesn't have a build step. It doesn't have configuration. And it doesn't have a build step for or a compiler for TypeScript. It just runs your TypeScript code. There is 
a lot of things it by design doesn't have to keep it simple. And I'm really impressed with the performance that I've been seeing with it. The actual way it works like ergonomically feels like a hybrid of Remix and Astro in the sense that it's bring your own client side framework like Astro where you're expected to like if you want interactivity, then they'd bring in Preact, bring in Svelte, bring in the thing you want to do that with. Very astro -y. But it's data loading patterns, it's routing strategies, and it's lack of templating system make it feel much more remixy. Where even in like the examples that it uses by default, it's uh, Preact and JSX for the server and the client rendering. I think it supports other things. I, right now, it might actually only support Preact, but it's by design meant to theoretically support other things as well. So the syntax is interesting. You have to at JSX H. This is telling the um, Dena runtime that this file is using JSX and it's using H to interpret that JSX. H is a jsx and runtime interpreter that does a pretty good job of performantly letting you write jsx in your code and ship the jsx but actually rip out like more traditional like javascript function calls at runtime uh preact does support uh i don't know if it supports like a a, a official jsx runtime but uh this jsx hook does it say what it's doing to keep it from having a build step yeah, I'm pretty sure that the code it is running is still this JSX on the server. Yeah, they're doing weird things with this to not need a compiler, but it works so far. One of the more interesting things that I realized when I was playing with it, uh, let me just, I have a project with this open. Let me, Adeno, task start. Localhost 8. 3,000, they picked 8,000 by default to each their own. Cool. So this, I'm doing a bunch of like metrics because I'm a nerd about data. And we have the code open here. Get the brightness up so I can see my screen. Cool. So one of the things that really surprised me is how the render, or how the uh, routing works, where it still has like a routes folder. So if I make like high stream.tsx, Yoink, uh, this is the simpler one. Paste this, kill all of the resources and all this crap because I don't need it. Kill this too. Div high stream. So when I make this new file, what's really interesting is it actually changed fresh.gen.ts as well. It generates a file that is the manifest and like patterns for actually loading from your routes. Next.js does something like this, but it does it as a compile step. So you never see this code. Not only does Fresh not do this as a compile step and do it in front of your face, it actually expects you to commit this as uh, like build artifact and have this included in the build. It's actually really cool because now when I'm code reviewing, yeah, sure, I have like the folder structure I can see from there, but this gives you a very deterministic what is actually happening in the code that you can like read in code review and see the specific behaviors that your file and folder placement have incurred on your code base. Let's play with this because there's some cool stuff here. First, we have this like basic counter components. Y'all have seen one of these before. Let me quickly go to the highstream.ts page. Here's the highstream page. So I have this counter component. It's in the islands folder, which is important. We'll get to why in a second. So I'm going to put counter here. No. This is one of the things it doesn't have solved yet is imports still suck. Like auto imports, I should say. This is going to need a number. Star equals five. Cool. So 
now we have this counter six five whatever and i'm pretty sure it doesn't have to create a new island because this is still the same file but watch this if i copy counter and i paste this into components instead i'll do uh counter component i'll name this one and we're going to use this instead here start equals 10 so we can tell the difference between them and duplicate this this one doesn't work why does this one work and this one doesn't the reason is because anything that isn't in islands never gets to the user only island exports js components just runs on the server any other file folder whatever you make that isn't inside of here is only used for the actual building of the first html page yeah, this is very jason miller-esque uh, good shout out to miller for those that don't know jason miller is the creator of preact and this is very much like encoding his way of thinking and i'm excited to see how you are going to use it for stuff you can see since i put that somewhere other than islands we didn't get an export for it here theoretically i could modify this file and brute force it to import from that other place and make it dynamic but i don't care to i understand how this works i like the the concept of this what's the advantage over astro the ergonomics around jsx primarily this is a very like fresh isn't its own language fresh fresh feels very reacty in its ergonomics where it's very javascript still like all the code in here is just javascript there isn't a build step there isn't anything but the javascript itself and a pretty clear islands is where you go to get the dynamic parts but you use the same code to like I'm writing Preact components for my static parts, and I'm writing Preact components for my dynamic parts. The difference is which folder they're coming from. In Astro, you use Astro for your static parts, and you use other things for the dynamic parts, and you have to build that relationship yourself. It's very different in that way. Yes, you won't be able to use NPM packages in this. You won't be able to use much of anything that already exists in this. Tailwind itself doesn't even work because it requires a build step. So they have Twind by default. So if you want to use Tailwind, you actually import TW from Twind and then use that to define things instead. Very different in those ways. It's the process of writing it feels a lot like Remix, but way more performant. The architecture is designed a lot more like Astro, but with less difference between the parts but also a much less simple experience for writing a, a static thing. Astro is still unbeaten in terms of const users equals await prisma dot users dot find many, and then just calling that in the HTML. <laughs> like, like the goal of Astro was take all these wonderful tools we love for building websites and make it really easy to build static sites with them. <laughs> Deno is, it's specifically fresh with Deno, is all of those old things kind of suck. JavaScript's cool, though. What if we start from there and make a really fast way to generate a static HTML site and let you use the same tools to do, like, dynamic behaviors as well? Yeah, it's got so many different... Like, I almost want to do, like, one of those, like, like 2D grids where it's, like, the different frameworks, the things they do and don't have, but I hate those, and it won't communicate the differences meaningfully. There's... Like, all of these are such fundamentally different approach approaches silva asked with deno you can do static site generation with no build step effectively yes this deno code right now that i ran like the deno task start what this is doing is it's running javascript as a server well typescript the code that i gave it and it is giving me back html if i go to the network here there we go high stream this is html that we get back it has the import from that one island but beyond that it's just giving us html 
Can I pretty print this? Cool. Here's the pretty printed version. And in here, we have a very basic fresh counter, fresh counter ends, and then the traditional HTML. You'll even see these two are very similar, but this one has this command or uh, uh, comment that indicates that to the JavaScript that this is where it should start and like hook in. This doesn't have that. And that is what we get back. It is generating the HTML on the server using Deno, but it is not. So uh, I think the confusion here, I'm seeing a few more questions about it, is like, what is the build step? The build step isn't the thing that generates HTML. It's the thing that turns your TypeScript into JavaScript that, they can, that can then generate your HTML. So all inside of this, we have TypeScript. And on the other, we have HTML. Different solutions solve this many different ways. One of the first things you usually have to do is turn that TypeScript into like minified runnable JS. Because you can't run TypeScript. Unless you're shipping Deno and have been for a while, you're not actually running TypeScript. You might be writing TypeScript. In fact, hopefully you are writing TypeScript if you're hanging out here, but you are not running TypeScript. Right here, you're using something like Babel, ESBuild, Webpack, all these different types of tools. It's actually a few steps before this, arguably, which is first you have to go from TypeScript to JavaScript because all the things in TypeScript aren't real code. So you have to get rid of all those, convert it to JS, and you have to bundle it. And you might even have to do other compiler steps at this stage too, like parsing the code to find all of the Tailwind classes, finding all of the styled components, like definitions that it needs to compile out like JITs for. This step is pretty heavy and slow. And then you have to ship to server. <laughs> I didn't think I actually have this many steps for this. I thought I put too much space, but I guess I put too little. And have to server, and then you have to run it on the server. So what I'm referring to as build right now, as I've been saying build throughout this, is here. This section is build. Let me make this a different color. This is deploy. And if, if from here, this is where things get a little complex. Because here, two different things can happen. One is here, we could just hand the files over. And then when requests come in, we can run. Or once the code is there, the server can build it from here. So I'll say, I'm going to actually cut this into two different paths now. So I've shipped to server. Let's break this up and make it nice and fancy. So one of these paths is statically gener or is like run on server on request. So whenever a user makes a request, the JavaScript you shipped to the server gets run. And then it generates HTML that uh get sent to the user. So generate HTML on request. That's what I'll say for this. That's one of the options. I don't want to copy all that. The other option, generate static HTML on build, which is when you push this code up to the server, it goes through all of the different paths that uh, you've created in your project then generates actual HTML files that then live on a, a CDN. So there's actually like two steps here. You generate and then you uh, put on CDN. You know, this arrow thing is not making this as clear as I was hoping. So we're going to not do it that way. What we're instead going to do is two different paths. So we'll do just the like generate HTML on request way. So honestly, the line would segment here. I'll label this one SSR. 
we're going to call this line the user request line. So now a user makes a request. We generate the HTML on the request. And then we send HTML to user. And then the users at the end here, where they get the HTML. User gets HTML. Cool. So now we're going to do the thing that everybody is getting confused right now, I think, which is I need to shift this over left more, keep it lined up, which is the SSG, static site generation. So the difference here is right here, actually, is when we ship to the server, we're not done. We put this new blue box here, generate. What the hell? There we go. And this generate step is the big difference. And then when the user request comes in, uh, return cached HTML to user. And the user ends up getting the HTML way faster because this generation happens way earlier. The thing I'm trying to ice or like show by doing it this way is that since we're generating static HTML here, by the time the user's making the request, there's already an HTML file for them to be requesting. We don't have to generate it on request. Whereas in an SSR environment, there is no HTML. There is just the JavaScript on the server. And then the request triggers this generation. So I would actually have to put this here to be accurate. So static site generation is doing the building and the generating early for the like site. SSR is doing it here. And this is not build, to be clear. We're not building anything on either of these steps. We are using our built JavaScript to generate HTML. And that is a generation step that in fresh occurs on request because there is no build step. So if I was to copy this one once more and call this fresh there that's the difference <laughs> cool you zoom out is that like in any way legible yeah it's relatively legible cool so the big difference here that i'm trying to highlight is there's none of this build stuff that creates the javascript that you ship to the server it's just what you ship to the server. And then you generate requests then. But there's no build that occurs here. You take your TypeScript, you send it to your server, and then when a request comes in, HTML is generated. Can you cache the HTML on first request with SSR? Sure. There are other ways to get this HTML into the cache so you don't have to regenerate it in the future. But that's a thing you have to do. It's not a thing that's inherent to picking one of these methodologies. What are we shipping to the server, Quantum? Good question. We are shipping this, all the code here, the code in this file or in this directory right here, even the VS code bit here that isn't obviously using the server. We send all of this to the server. And the same way when I on my computer here, I type deno task start. This isn't building anything. What this is doing is it is reading the, uh, I believe it starts in fresh gen TS. Wait, maybe not. I forgot where it specifically starts. Oh, main TS. Cool. This is what it runs. So when I type in the deno run command, it calls this function render, which takes a context and inner render function, and then it generates HTML and then uses Twind to like do the styling on top of it, and then returns that to the user when a request occurs. Uh, Quantum asked, uh, for, this is TS, so when do we get to JS? We don't for 
the code that runs on the server. Deno actually lets you run TypeScript on servers. It's it skips that step. As for what it does on the client for the islands, that's actually a really good question. I don't have an answer for because it shouldn't work and it must have to transpile that. That is actually a really good question. Uh, yeah, I, th I don't actually know what it's going to do for that. They, they have to do some crazy compiler hacks for that. I, I will. I don't want to do the digging to confirm how they're doing that just now. But that was a really good uh, call out quantum. Deno can run TypeScript. Your browser cannot. So the islands have to be compiled in some way. So anything in this file, and I'm guessing that's what this fresh gen TS does to some extent, is it is telling Deno, hey, this path, we're sending it to the user. Make sure we quickly like compile and minify that and make that JS on the other side. Oh, they're using JIT. That makes sense. Thank you, Ross, for the clarification on that. Browsers will probably not support TypeScript someday. There's like some type syntax that they may support in the future, but TypeScript itself is not super interesting for like the browser. It's more like rules for us to follow as devs. Fresh is really cool. I am super excited about what the demo team's been working on. I would not use this for an app right now, to be very clear. If I was to build my own framework from scratch, I would probably start with what they're working on here because it seems to be like a really good starting point. They did not consider type safety at all. And that always frustrates me because it's pretty close to having a type safe solution, but they did not build it. So yeah, I wouldn't use this. I might build my own crazy framework on top of it with like a better type system, but a Deno does not have the best autocomplete and like TypeScript IntelliSense story right now already. I feel like that could get chaotic fast. All that said, it is crazy to see how fast this ecosystem is moving, and I am genuinely really excited for where it's going. So I will be keeping an eye on the Dino community and what is going on in Fresh. Although my need for node packages is too great for me to make the switch over myself. So those are my thoughts. Very excited for what they're working on there. Not where I need it to be just yet for me to start consuming it. So in the future, there's some really cool stuff here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I know Deno is really new, but I'm excited about talking about all these new things. If you didn't know this, over 60% of the viewers of this channel have not subscribed yet. That's crazy. Y'all watch these videos as soon as they come out and you still haven't hit that red subscribe button. Come on, get on that. It's right there. Click it, share the video with some friends if you like it. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I do read every comment and I do not delete them. So stop accusing me of that shit. I let all of those things sit there on rod, even the ones that are making fun of me for no good reason. Seriously, subscribe, leave a comment, and don't blame me for deleting shit I didn't touch. Thank you guys for stopping by.